my father Stephen was um, he was a farmer and he just got into mares he liked them like a lot of farmers at the time did and um, he bred a few good horses a horse called Soft Day who was a great one winner um, called Day who won a quick bread um, and a very sort of good horses so that's how it started we named it the stud um, Art Attack because Arctic Slave was the thing, and my father was big into Arctic Slave, magnificent fan of him. He was a brilliant sir, brilliant bloomer sir. And he had this Arctic Slave marriage, she had no pedigree. She bred Soft Day, the Grand Dame of College Day. I mean, she's just think she's a brilliant pedigree. Um, and just because she was lucky, she was the same age as me, I decided to name the place Architect Stud. More in, as a memory from my father than anything else. But again, it's been lucky, thankfully. We've bred some very nice horses here. Um, Lately, Amy Tom won a grade two, Rinnesham last year. Um, Hardline won a grade one for Gordon and Gingstown. Um, the horse that won the national, uh, general principal. Jetaway, he's from um, a brilliant Judman family. Good race horse, good looking horse. Um, again, he's been well supported and um, from the start. And thankfully, he's getting winners. He's, he's starting off very, very well. Very well, as good as any sign I've seen anyway at the moment. He's really started off really promising. Well, his, his physical characteristics is that he's very correct. Good looking horse with a bit of size, a bit of scope. Um, his probably biggest characteristic is his temperament. Um, he has a great temperament, and his stock appear to have a very, very good temperament. They seem to want to do it, you know? Which again, is very important in the game that we're in, you know? Very, very promising from the get-go. Um, first four runners, three winners, and point to points. Again, phenomenal start. Bumper winner with Gordon Elliott. You know, touch wood. You know, things are happening from um, he's owned um, in partnership with a, a fellow called Dougie Taylor, and Dougie's been brilliant about supporting him as well. So, so thankfully, um, it's just working out at the moment. Touch wood. I've got great hope that he could be very good. You know, I have great hope for it. Old Man River. Um, he's a by Manjou, which is a great influence for the game. Hurricane Fly, just to start off with, and you could keep going for a year for you know. Um, he's out of a brilliant mare. Um, Finske B.O. who won two guineas, she should have won a third for Jim Bolger, brilliant race mare. Um, he was a very expensive yearling, he was a good race horse, a two year old. Um, great moving horse, great walker, just lovely horse, lovely horse with a good temperament as well, you know. First cop, two year olds now, turning three, so we'll know within a year and a half or so whether it's there or not. I just got a funny feeling it's possible, it's possible. Um, good stock by him, I've, I have some nice stores here by him. I like them, I like them. The level activity, we've changed in the last few years to walk in only, which means the mare comes down, gets covered and goes home again. Um, we did that for a few reasons. The main reason is I've enough of my own mares here to keep myself busy. Um, when you have a lot of other mares visiting, you have issues that come with that, staffing, etc., etc. So we, we've decided to walk in for the last three years and it's been working out fantastic. Um, Fellas, bring down the mare, cover the mare and bring them home again. Um, from a personal point of view, it's much easier for me to manage. And from a staff point of view, it's easier to manage. Plus, I like to do my own mares, my own foals, my own thing. And I've quite a few of them, so I just decided to go that way. And thankfully, it's worked. Business model has changed as far as the quality. They're demanding better quality, so that the lesser horse is finding very hard to get traction, like it used to. So it's just harder for everyone to get the quality mares. If you get the quality mares, you get the quality stock and the quality stock becomes easier. One begets the other, if you understand what I'm saying. Basic principle of, if it's not good enough for my mares, it's not good enough for anyone else's mares. I don't send mares out, I very rarely do, unless I have it, or unless they're in partnership or something like that. Bred lots of good horses. I suppose the first real good horse we bred was a horse called John Spirit, who won uh, grade three in Cheltenham. Uh, I think it's the Paddy Power meeting. Um, for that day, I was there, it was brilliant, you know, just, just to do something thing. He, he wasn't top class, but he was just shy of it. He was looking enough to bred a real good horse called Flying Angel, who won a grade one and entered the year after, or two years after, sorry. And again, that was the first grade one by a sire here that I bred. So again, that was sort of nice for it to happen, you know? I wouldn't do it without the hope of it. If, if you understand it, the hope is, is the eternal hope. Uh, maybe it's a national thing on us. Maybe we're just stupid, I don't know, but, but I, I can't wait for a young sire to go through and have his first runners. I can't wait. We'll see them run and then hopefully we'll see them with, 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 the, with the, the top class trainers, which are there many in Ireland and England. And then you'd hope that you've bred one of them. Um, 
and breeding one of them is, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Um, I've owned lots of racehorses. I've had lots of racehorses. Um, but breeding one is, can be extraordinarily rewarding, you know.